marquee message. This is where the king dollar will meet its funeral march. This will be where the BRICS lay out all the different non-dollar payment methods. So I think what we're seeing right now in silver with this congestive action in the low 30s is when you break out of this stuff, those two peaks at 50, historical old peaks, 1980, 2011, they're going out fast. The likely silver is going to gush past those highs before it even pauses. And that'll, of course, what? Wake up the world. You don't even have to look at a silver chart or a gold chart anymore. Just assume they're both going to go vertical. Only this time, silver is going to vastly outpace gold. And if you're right, it should be. But why are eight commercial banks holding the largest short position in any commodity ever traded in the history of the COMEX? And why are do we see a between a, a five and a six billion ounce short position on the London Metals Exchange that is being exploited by these countries? In today's weekly recap, three financial experts, Jim Willie, Andy Schechtman, and Michael Oliver, discuss the latest developments surrounding the BRICS nations, the Embridge payment system, and the highly anticipated upcoming BRICS meeting. They dive into how these changes could reshape the global financial landscape with a special focus on gold, silver, and the shift away from the U.S. dollar. We watched hours of footage so you don't have to. Now we'll show you the best clips of the latest interview but first hit the like button smash the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss out our daily videos enjoy the episode like interpreting the wind okay that's what i try to do once in a while um it was last august we had a BRICS meeting in south africa <clears throat> They actually blocked President Xi of China and his delegation. They, they held him in a hotel. They did not want him at the BRICS meeting to talk about social scoring for bank account access. Okay, that's the BRICS. The BRICS did not want the Chinese to dictate bank policy for social credit. Okay, that was a year ago. Okay, that's a preface. Then in June, the Russians took control. What do they call it? They're hosting the BRICS meetings. So it was in St. Petersburg. <clears throat> so the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum, where they had 23 deals worth, no, I'm sorry, 70 deals worth 23 billion. And contrast that with, the, with uh, Davos, they had no deals, no contracts, no economic contracts, no nothing. That's not an economic form. It's a banker form. <clears throat> so St. Petersburg, Chris, they had some results. They announced an alpha test for Embridge. They announced enhancements for the Embridge protocol. <clears throat> they announced the unit. And they said that more development was going to be doing, was going to be coming for the unit. And they said, Look forward to the October meeting where we're going to have more announcements, more developments, more revelations, and more specifics. <clears throat> In the meantime, Russia announced that XRP is going to be the official intermediary between all their central banks, financial institutions, and banks, and all the other side, the merchants, and the ones that take payment for whatever product or service. So the Russians let it be known that XRP is going to be important to them. <clears throat> now, I'm looking forward to Kazan in two weeks because we have been, we have been conditioned. We have been warned that a lot of details are coming in Kazan. A lot of details on payment systems, different options to operate under Embridge, maybe a lot of specifics and details and perhaps enhancement for Bridge, which is a payment system and not a protocol. <clears throat> We're probably going to get more details about the digital ledger and its usage 
and, and some of the features and just some of the volume. We're probably going to get more data on dumping treasury bonds and buying gold, more volume. We're probably going to get more details about the NAT, uh, the, the BRICS development, the new development bank, NDB, they're calling it. We may get more details about how they're going to fund the new development bank. Okay, these are all areas that I'm going to be devoting attention to. And, you know, when this meeting is over, um, I'm going to need to do my chapter on the BRICS for the October report. And that's what I did back in June, except back in June, it was like the 15th to the 17th. This is later in the month, so it's going to be a little more difficult to get a lot of information that's specific um, and, and confirmed about the BRICS meeting. I think this is going to be a big splash, okay? And, and what I'm hearing... You know, just like in a, a marquee message, this is where the king dollar will meet its funeral march. This will be where the BRICS lay out all the different non-dollar payment methods. I think we're going to get a lot of momentum after October where the dollar is going to be down below 50% on international payments. That's coming. In today's news recap, silver prices near multi-year high as gold approaches record levels. Silver prices are rallying sharply on Wednesday, approaching the multi-year high of $32.96 reached on October 4th. A breakthrough above this level could trigger a rapid ascent towards the next significant resistance at $34.35. Both silver and gold are benefiting from a risk-off sentiment in the market. Gold is trading near its all-time high of 2,600 $85.64 dollars with the current session high at $2,682.88 dollars. The precious metals market is finding support from weakening equities and declining bond yields. Traders are closely monitoring upcoming U.S. economic data releases, including retail sales, industrial production, and weekly jobless claims. These reports will provide crucial insights into the Federal Reserve's potential timeline for interest rate cuts. San Francisco Federal Reserve Bank President Mary Daly has indicated that the central bank remains on track for rate reductions this year, assuming economic data aligns with expectations. Delegates at the London Bullion Market Association's annual gathering have forecasted a substantial increase in precious metal prices over the next 12 months. They predict gold will rise to $2,950 and silver will surge to $45 per ounce, representing significant upside potential from current levels. Now, we'll show you more clips of the latest interview, but first, smash the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss out our daily recaps. Enjoy the episode is that Turkey has formally applied to the BRICS and here they're, they're a NATO member. What does that signify? Um, you know, we have the meeting in Kazan here next week. Um, one of the mistakes I think that James Rickard made last year was saying things that I think will ultimately come true, things that I've been saying for three years. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization will indeed join the BRICS. Will it happen now? He said it would happen last year. And he got kind of beaten up for it. He'll be right. His timing was wrong. That's the, that's the, the history of, of my company. That's the history of everything we've ever said. Timing is impossible. That's what the one thing about my talking about bricks for four years that astonishes me is that I was right on the timing because I've been wrong on a lot of things. But seeing the timing in my mind's eye and watching it come true and accentuating, accelerating, when I was one of the only people in the country talking about it, it is amazing. Well, James will be right. We will see the Shanghai Cooperation Organization join the BRICS. We will see the Eurasian Economic Union join the BRICS. The president of Belarus called a summit for that indeed to happen. He said it would happen last year. It didn't. It will. He said that there would be a common currency last year announced at uh, at, at the meeting in, in, in South Africa. It wasn't, but it will. And it may not now. They may say we've 
you know, as Delma Rousseff, the president of Brazil, uh, former president of Brazil and the head of the New Development Bank said, we've agreed in principle to the unit settlement currency, which will be traded over Enbridge, pegged to gold, 40%. We've talked a lot about that. We will get greater clarity on that. Will they issue it this week? Probably not, but greater clarity indeed, yes. 59 countries have formally thrown their hat into the ring. Will we find out which ones? Probably. Will we find out more have been admitted? Maybe. But this is one of these deals where the cat is out of the bag and things are moving in a progression that is undeniable. Yes, greater percentage of GDP, three of the four largest nuclear arsenals, you know, larger portion of human population. You throw the Belt Road Initiative into it, you got 80% of the world's population, the majority of all the commodity production, the trade routes, both on land and on sea, uh, the 100% refining of all of the world's rare earths, 85% of their production. I mean, this green thing we haven't thought out real well, it's becoming real. And it's as if we've, we've, we have assisted in this, in this uh, move away from the dollar through our actions of weaponization, of, of, of signing in order to go green, of destabilizing the interior of the country. All of these things we talk about, this is what is incentivizing the world to move away from the dollar. And now you get countries like Russia saying, we're going to add silver to our strategic stockpile. Uh, this first time we've ever seen a country say that. They also said platinum and palladium. Well, who makes them or mines the majority of the platinum and palladium? South Africa and Russia, BRICS countries. Now they're going to start going after silver. China is flying all around the world buying dore and concentrate from the miners, paying double what the West will. They're the second largest producer in the world. Do you see what these BRICS countries are doing, whether it be on the Belt Road, whether it be in the BRICS, whether it be in their own national interests, they're accumulating co commodities and selling dollars. That is where we're going. This is what the world will be all about, transparency and commodities. At the same time, we're concerned with debt instruments and, and, and not being transparent and sanctions and inflation and craziness in our cities and, and lawlessness and divisiveness. We've, we've diver diverged so far from what made this country so special, that that's what we need to get back. More than anything, we got to start one place at a, one piece at a time, starting with our own house. But what you see happening with the BRICS is real, and um, it's becoming more real. And now you got Marjorie Taylor Greene. I grant you, she doesn't have the most credibility. She's screaming, the BRICS are going to take over. You got Trump saying. We're going to lose our reserve status. And what does he say? I'm going to keep that and we're going to sanction and we're going to put on 100% tariffs. And he's also talking about a weaker dollar and low interest rates. It's not what you need to do. Yes, he's better than the alternative and he'll get our house in order. But in terms of stopping the move away from this growing chorus of countries, they're, they're finding unity because of sanctions, because of tariffs, because of of weaponization because of hypocrisy because of destabilization of the dollar and the and 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 the the treasury you don't have to be a genius to put this stuff together and the problem that most people have done again quite frankly is that instant gratification isn't fast enough why isn't it going up faster silver's up 32 percent this year but that's not fast enough damn it it's underperforming and gold is is rocketing but you know it should be higher okay fine in today's news recap, how high can gold and silver rally? Gold's record-breaking rally continues and following another shallow mid-month correction that saw buyers return ahead of $2,600, spot bullion has returned to trade just below the $2,685 record reached last month. The precious metal market has witnessed an unprecedented strong uptrend this past year, with gold and silver both trading up close to 40% with only minor corrections seen during this extended rally, a sign of strong underlying momentum and FOMO, fear of missing out, of a rally that at this point shows little signs of ending. Since hitting a cycle low last October, the gold rally has, as per the three attempted trend lines, continued to accelerate, highlighting the level of FOMO and fundamental support the metal has and continues to enjoy. In the short term, Traders will be watching incoming U.S. data to see whether support remains strong enough for the metal to reach another fresh record, the sixth 
this year. The bullish drivers throughout this period are numerous, with the most important being the risk of fiscal instability, safe haven appeal, geopolitical tensions, de-dollarization, uncertainties surrounding the U.S. presidential election, and now also rate cuts, not just by the Fed, but by other central banks as well, reducing the cost of holding non-interest paying investments in gold and silver. The latter potentially supports increased demand for gold-backed ETFs from underinvested asset managers, especially in the West, who up until May had been net sellers since the FOMC began its aggressive rate hikes in 2022. The sustained demand for investment metals during this time has, for now, triggered a breakdown in the normal inverse correlation between gold and the dollar. The latest example is the lack of a negative reaction in gold to the 2.5% gain in the Bloomberg dollar index since the beginning of September, a period that has seen the timing, speed, and depth of future U.S. rate cuts pared back amid continued strength in U.S. economic data. However, with inflation increasingly getting under control and in some countries and regions falling back below 2%, the prospect of further rate cuts remains. This week, a poll among delegates from around the world attending the London Bullion Market Association's annual gathering predicted higher prices in a year's time for gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. While gold is expected to climb around 10% to $2,917.40 an ounce by late October next year, delegates held a very strong view on silver, seeing it gain more than 40% to reach $45 an ounce, with experts noting that industrial demand continues to drive market deficits as mine supply struggles to keep pace. Now we'll show you the best clips of the latest interview, but first hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, and turn on notifications so you do not miss out our daily videos. Enjoy the episode. The mama market, the one holding the leash, didn't really drop much. But silver, like, like, I'm going to jump off a cliff. Well, (laughs) we made that low. It was Tuesday a week ago. We put out a report and said, this is a bear trap. Do not not pay attention to this day. Mm -hmm. At that point, we were down, you know, just above uh, 30, I think it was, in the 30s low 30s. And they've been, you know, above 32 and 33 even. So we'd had a sharp drop there. So again, the leash went the other way. But if you looked over at gold, it was steady. And what happened? Silver is now back up pushing toward 32 now. Okay. So now when we measure the spread of silver versus gold, it's a ratio. We divide the price of silver into gold. And so we get a percent. So silver, if you go back 50 years and plot a bar graph chart, which we did in the weekend report, showing the peak silver to gold spread reading that year. You'll see that in that 50-year period, 21 of those years reached at least 2% level, where silver was 2% of the price of gold. In the 1980 bull market, when silver reached 50, that first time it ever did, it was up to six and a half percent of the price of gold. And then it fell back down. And then in the 19, uh, 2011 peak, when silver again reached 50, gold was 1900, silver reached three plus percent the price of gold. Silver right now is 1.189% or 1.19%, let's say. The price of gold is very cheap historically in relation to the price of gold. Mm-hmm. But when you measure the spread, technically, week by week or even day by day, and create a momentum chart of it. You can even see it on the spread chart. You get up above 1.3% by much, and you're going to blow a cork, meaning silver is going to outperform gold vastly. It's going to unleash technically. And again, we're just below 1.2% right now. And I think there's enough things just above 1.2 to drive you up to that 1.3 plus percent level and trigger this bigger stuff. But if silver went to 2% of the price of gold, again, it's been at 2%, 21 of the past 50 years. So it's hardly an excessive thing. And gold were even, you know, just 3,000. 
Okay, 2% of 3,000, you do the math, okay? An all-time new high, 60 bucks, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and I don't think gold is going to go to 3,000. A lot of people have that as a working target, some major firms. I think silver, I think gold's going, the next stopping point will be 3,200. And if silver happened to be 2% then, and the spread broke out, and by the way, when that spread breaks out, it is also a signal that the net price action of both metals is about to go vertical. It happened in 1979 to 80 mm -hmm. when the spread exploded. Silver exploded. Gold exploded too, but silver led. And it happened in 2010, latter half of 2010, prior to the rush in silver by April of 2011, where it reached 50 bucks again. The spread broke out. And sure enough, silver price unleashed at the same time, net wise and versus gold. And we have the same pending situation right now where if we break that spread out, you don't even have to look at a silver chart or a gold chart anymore. Just assume they're both going to go vertical. Only this time, silver is going to vastly outpace gold. And it's got so much room to do so to even get back to, quote, what you could call normal levels. That if gold were to go to, for instance, our next level that we think there might be a, a stumble or a pause is 3,200. Mm -hmm. Well, if silver reached 2%, we'd be $66. What do you think of Oliver's take? Do you agree with him? Do you believe silver will surpass $60 in the foreseeable future as the gold melt-up continues? Or are all these predictions just bollocks? Post your honest opinion in the comment section below and share your plan with uh, fellow stackers if BRICS takes over. Thanks for watching. Now check out this video right here. It's a perfect fit for you. I'll see you on the other side.